What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Sam. This is the Keep On Coding channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about the pros and the cons of being a software developer. Coming up. So we're gonna start out with the pros. You know, I wanna get your confidence up a little bit before I hit you guys with the bad news. But the first thing I wanna talk about is salary. I mean, I have to talk about salary. I have to. You know, if you go to Google and you search software engineer or software developer, the next thing that it autocompletes to is salary. I mean, why do you think so many people flock to Silicon Valley or other big tech hubs around the world? It's for the money. There's a reason why the Bay Area is becoming so overpopulated. The traffic's become crazy. The housing prices are now one of the most expensive in the world. So if we go to this website here called levels.fyi, and some of you guys might be familiar with this site, this gives you the different levels of all the major tech companies. So at Facebook, a, a grad level engineer will be making 184 total compensation. Um, you know, when you factor in salary, stock, bonus. So a bonus could be something like a, a sign on bonus. Um, you know, if you had to move, they'll pay you a stipend for moving. And it could just be, you know, a bonus that you get at the end of the year for your performance. And then obviously stock, Facebook stock, and, and you know, that could go up even higher if the Facebook stock goes up. So an E3 at Facebook will be considered like an entry level or a new grad role. Why starts out with three and not two or one? I have no idea, maybe someone else knows. Um, but E3 is like the entry level. Now, once you get some experience and you get a promotion, you get to E4. And if we look at this, this is $243,000, almost a quarter million dollars a year which is like actually insane if you really think about it. For being an employee, um, you know, in the same time that you took to get your high school diploma or go to college, you could have made a million dollars. So that's pretty crazy. Now I know, you know, not everyone's gonna be working at Facebook, but even if you go to, you know, maybe a more modest company, you know, what is a little bit more modest here? You know, if you go to like Adobe, which is, you know, a solid company, um, you know, a software engineer one, 140,000, you know, it's almost as good. Um, so the salaries are pretty insane. And that is a, and that is one of the big pros of being a software developer. Now I know money isn't everything, um, but I've had, I've heard people say, you know, I don't care about money when I'm getting a job. They were like, yeah, I was interviewing with someone and they were talking about how much money they make and they didn't know that I don't care about money. And I was like, okay, well, I bet you if your boss tomorrow comes in and is like, hey, you know what? Since you don't care about money, we're just not gonna pay you anymore. But we still want you to come in and do all your, you know, everything that you normally do. Uh, I bet you 99% or probably 100% of you will be like, no, nah, I'm not coming into work. Or even if we're like, we're slashing your salary by 25%, you know, no one's gonna be happy about that. That's why I had to mention salary first. So for number two, the second pro are the benefits that you get. Most companies are gonna be offering you full insurance, you know, like your vision, medical, dental, because they have to if they wanna be competitive with the other tech companies. Um, you know, they have solid 401k matching. Google has a 50% match on your 401k, which is pretty crazy. Um, so, you know, you can put up to 18,000. I think they might've raised it, but it's about 18,000. Um, they will pay 50%. So you get an additional $9,000 a year just for your 401k. And then you just have the other benefits that they throw in. Like they pay for your transportation. They pay for a lot of your education. Say you want to go get like a master's while you're working. A lot of people will pay for all or a lot of it. They usually have like a great maternity or paternity leave, free gym membership. Um, some companies have unlimited PTO, which is kind of questionable if you ask me. I've been in a situation where they had unlimited PTO, which wasn't really, but if you are at a good company that actually like respects that, um, you can get a lot of time off, which is really nice. Um, another thing, another benefit is the free food that you get, right? You know, I've talked about it before in my videos, you know, your day in the life video, what are they gonna be showing you? Like, it's almost like a requirement that they have to show them like putting food into their plate. It's like free food, filming yourself coding, and you know, filming your community. Those are like the three requirements for those types of videos. But you know, at some companies, you know, you can go in, eat breakfast there at like eight or nine, get free lunch, and then before you go home at like five or six, go grab dinner. So you basically are not paying for any food. The next pro of being a software developer are the smart coworkers that you get to work with. 
And even in my pretty short career of only a few years of being a software developer, you know, you get to work with people that have like 10 to 20 years of experience. And really experience is the best teacher because I mean, you know, if you're working for 20 years, you've pretty much seen it all. And there's stuff that you've seen that you won't be able to learn just, you know, from reading a book. And, you know, my coworkers have saved me so much time just on like even like little things that I've been stuck on where I just needed a fresh pair of eyes to look at. Um, and then they end up looking at it and they find out that you just missed a semicolon and you kind of feel like an idiot. But when you have a lot of people, you know, with different skill sets, um, you guys kind of like come together and, you know, for example, like my SQL might not be the best. So if I'm stuck on a query, I'll have someone help me out with that. Um, but then maybe that same person is not as good at front end. They'll come ask me and then I'll help them with that. So it's kind of like, you know, once you get a group of people that have different skill sets, you guys kind of like come together and learn from each other. The next thing I want to talk about is job security. Now, this one's a little bit shaky because you're never fully safe, um, especially if you're working at a startup, like the startup could go under and you can get let go and it might not even be anything, you know, it's not even your fault. Or even if you had a big company and they're doing some kind of like reorganization, you could be let go. It's fairly easy to get a job somewhere else. Um, you know, as long as you have some experience and you, you know, you brush up on your programming skills, um, you should be able to find somewhere else fairly quickly. And this depends on your interviewing skills, you know, how strong are you at your data structures and algorithms. But luckily those are skills that can be picked up. So the next pro I wanted to talk about is that your work can affect a lot of people. Say you're working on some kind of external facing website and you build, you know, even like a small feature, um, that's gonna impact the lives of, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of people. You can even like show your friends or your family, be like, hey, like go to this website. Like, hey, I, I look, I built that. Um, and I think that's a pretty cool feeling. Another thing could be internal tools. Um, for me, I build stuff that other people in the company use. And it's really cool when someone else comes up to me and like, hey, that feature that you built, like saved our team so much time. Um, and you know, just a good feeling. Another thing is the ability to work for yourself. You know, if you're a full stack engineer, once you your skills get really good, um, you have the potential to start your own business. You know, all it takes is really one good idea and then you have the skill set to build that out. Um, another thing could be freelance work. Um, you know, you could charge companies like $100 an hour to build, help build out their website. So it definitely gives you a lot of flexibility. It gives you a lot of freedom and the possibilities are endless. All right, so that takes us to the question of the day, which is what is one thing that you consider to be a pro or con of being a software development? Let me know in the comments. All right, so with the pros come the cons, right? With with good comes evil, with seven good seasons of Game of Thrones comes season eight. You need to have that balance. Um, so let's just get into the cons. Now the first con is salary. Now I know I said that this was a pro, but just hear me out, bear with me for a second. So if you're working for yourself, you're gonna have to pay your insurance, you're gonna have to pay, you know, you don't get a 401k, you can get a retirement account, but you can't put nearly as much in. But if you work for a tech company, you get all these things. So it really deters people from leaving and starting like their own business or their own hustle. But to be honest, you know, a lot of these tech companies, you know, like we saw Facebook, right? Like 250,000, that's great, but it's not enough to retire. You know, Facebook has so much cash that they could easily double their salary or double their engineer's salaries and not even feel it. But they pay you just enough so you won't leave, but they don't pay you enough so you leave. So that's kind of like the idea. It's called the golden handcuffs, where you're getting paid well, you're gonna live comfortably, but at the end of the day, you are still handcuffed to your job. Like imagine if like if I was on Facebook salary, that 250K, and say they doubled it, 500K, you know, I would just work for like five to 10 years, get like, you know, two to five million dollars and then probably just go like retire on an island or something. Now, some of you guys are totally fine with that. And, you know, I can't knock you for it. You know, maybe you have a, you know, maybe you have a family and, and kids and, and you're settled down. Maybe you don't want, you don't care about like, okay, I want to go like start our own business or something. And you're happy with that steady, solid income. The next con is the competition. Now, yes, there are a lot of software development jobs out there, um, but Honestly, the majority of software engineers are only going for like that top set of companies, which can make things very competitive when you're trying to get a job there. Um, I mean, you guys have seen some of the, the interview questions that get asked at these top companies. They're difficult problems and, it, and it's hard because you have a 
certain time limit, you have like 30 minutes to an hour to solve the problem. So, you know, you have to code well, you have to code well under pressure. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on there. You have to be able to talk while you're coding, which is really hard for a lot of people. And, you know, like I said, you know, people go where the money is. These top companies have their pick of the litter, so they're just going to pick you know, whoever does the best in the interviews. So that's one thing, it's, 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 there's a lot of competition. The next thing I wanted to talk about is coming into the office when it's unnecessary. I mostly just find this one annoying. You know, as someone who has a pretty bad commute, it seems kind of unnecessary to come into the office five days a week when I literally just go in and then just go to my computer and just do what I could have been doing at home. We have one of the few jobs probably in history where we can get away with, you know, just working at the own comfort of our own home. But you know, a lot of companies don't let you take advantage of that. So definitely a con in my book. Another thing is that we have to sit in a chair and stare at a screen all day. You know, I'm someone who likes to be outdoors. I like to be active and you know, that can be, it can be challenging to just like stay in one spot all day. On the bright side of things, you know, a lot of jobs nowadays are just staring at a screen. You know, I told that to one of my friends and he's like, he's a lawyer and he was like, dude, I stare at a screen all day too. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of like where things are heading. You know, one thing you can do is get a standing desk and you, you can like sit and stand throughout the day, which is what I do. If you can get like one of those like electronic ones that keep track, you have presets of, you know, the different heights. And supposedly it's better for you if you are sitting and standing throughout the day. Although like there was like a study that said, you know, standing throughout the day is not good for you. But, but then probably next month there'll be a study that says the opposite. So, you know, I just kind of do what I'm comfortable with. The next con here is working in either old technologies or technologies that you don't want to work on. Um, you know, when you have a job, it's kind of like, okay, you need to work on this and you really don't have much of a say. Or if you're working at a company where honestly, like if it's more than like five years old, you're probably going to be dealing with some legacy code. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I really like new stuff and I like building stuff. I don't like digging through really old code. I've had to do that in a lot of my jobs, unfortunately. I mean, every job has things that you don't like about it. You know, even if you're like a professional athlete, you have to like, you know, give interviews and deal with the media. So like every job has that. But like for me, that's like one of the big things that I don't like about our industry is just working with like old code. It gets, you know, can get kind of yucky. All right. So the last thing is that you always have to be learning. And I put this one last because it could kind of be a pro and a con. Personally, I love learning. Um, if I go a long time without learning something new, I get depressed. I used to be a bank teller for like two years. Um, and it was like doing the same thing every day. Like, hello, like cash a check. Hello, deposit a check. Like doing that every day for like two years. Um, you know, I was dreading going into work, but in software development, we're always learning. Whether it be learning from, you know, some kind of mistake that we made, learning a new technology. Like I could spend my whole life learning about software development and I wouldn't even, I would barely scratch the surface. But our industry is very fast paced. It's very easy to get left behind. You even look at like all the JavaScript frameworks, it seems like there's a new one every month. You know, you have to keep track of all this stuff or you're gonna go obsolete. You know, iOS updates every year. Uh, you have to keep your app updated or you risk the chance that it, it breaks. You can pretty much never chill or you're gonna be obsolete. Um, I know it's harsh, but it's, it's kind of like the survival of the fittest. That's why I say it's a pro and a con. Um, and I really do think that. So those are the pros and cons of being a software developer. You know, these are my personal opinions. Um, if you guys disagree, that's fine. Just let me know in the comments. Um, make sure you guys, you know, smash that like button. You know, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.